and welcome to our service for today, the first Sunday after Christmas Day. My name is Karen and I'll be leading our time together. However you spent your Christmas Day this year, I hope you were able to find a glimmer of hope and maybe even some joy and some laughter in these difficult times. Have you travelled to see friends or family over these last few days? Or have you, like me, stayed home this year? Today, we'll be thinking about the journeys that are part of the events around the birth of Jesus. And as an introduction to this theme, we're going to watch a short animated story from the Bible Society. We're going on a journey. It's going to be a long one. All the way to Bethlehem, cause Caesar wants to count us. Uh-oh, Romans, tall, scary Romans. We can't jump over them. We can't crawl under them. Oh no, we'll have to walk between them. Stepity step, walkity walk, stepity step. We're going on a journey. It's going to be a long one. Got to find a place to stay, cause Mary's having a baby. Uh-oh, no bed, no comfy, bouncy bed. We can't stay in the hotel, we can't stay in the spare room. Oh no, we'll have to sleep beside the animals. We're going on a journey. It's going to be a long one. An angel came to see us, told us of a saviour. So we're gonna welcome him. We'll find him in a manger. Uh Uh-oh. Sheep poo. Smelly, stinky poo. We can't fly over it. We can't tiptoe round it. Oh no, we'll have to tread on it. Tread, squelch, tread, squelch, tread, squelch. We're going on a journey. It's going to be a long one. Following the shiny star to worship the baby king. We've got loads of presents, gold myrrh and frankincense. Uh-oh, Herod, mean, nasty Herod. We can't go back to Herod. We can't say where Jesus is. Oh no, we'll have to leave another way. Humpity hump, cloppity clop, humpity hump. We've gone on a journey, but we're glad we did so. We met someone special, but who was it? Big brown eyes and big cheeks, ten tiny toes on two tiny feet. Why, it's Jesus! Quick, tell everyone! Going home another way, humpity hump, cloppity clop, humpity hump, back through the sheep poo, tread squelch, tread squelch, tread squelch, Ugh. saying so long to the animals. Eat a woof, cluck cluck bah. Mind the Romans, stepity step, walkity walk, stepity step, and we're home. Jesus went on a journey. It really was the greatest one. All the way from heaven, cause he came to save us. He came to live on earth with us, cause he loves us very much. Beatity beat, thumpity thump, beatity beat, thumpity thump. So, we've seen three journeys. The journey of Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem, the journey of the shepherds to visit baby Jesus, and the journey of the wise men or Magi. Today, we're going to be looking a little bit more closely at the journey of the Magi, and Rob is going to read this part of the story to us from the Bible. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 12. The visit of the Magi. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, 
Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child, and as soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. May God bless this reading of his word to us. Amen. I don't know about your year, but however strange you think yours has been, I'm not sure it can be any stranger than the year that I went on an epic journey and met a small child who turned out to be very special indeed. Just in case you haven't worked out who I am, I'm one of the Magi that you've just heard about in the piece of scripture that's just been read. But before I tell you my story, let me just get a few things straight. My friends and I are not kings, as some of your songs suggest. Though some people think I have important things to say, I don't rule a kingdom. We're not sort of uh, magicians either. We don't practice black magic or cast spells. We are really scholars, astrologers of sorts. Science and study have been my whole life. I've studied many things, prophecy and history, other cultures, and yes, even the stars. Many have called me wise, and I would have agreed with them until the night that I met the small child, Jesus. I wasn't there that night that he was born, even though you often seem to include me in your manger scenes alongside the shepherds. It was some time after Jesus was born that we, that is my friends and I, found our way to Bethlehem. Jesus was a young child of less than two years when we arrived and certainly not a newborn. Anyway, now we've got those details sorted out, I shall begin. My story starts with a star appearing in the western sky many, many years ago. It was a bright star that, should, uh, that stood out from the many others around it. It vied for my attention almost like it wanted me to know something, something wonderful, something monumental that perhaps had happened, something in a distant land. Through our studies, we had learned that the Jews were looking for the coming of one that they called the Messiah. We'd studied their writings and found that their stories were strangely compelling. We knew the stories, but now with this star appearing, the questions began. Could this be the sign that we've been waiting for? Could this be the sign 
of a Messiah. And as we discuss these things amongst ourselves, a need, a longing filled our hearts. And we made the decision to travel to see what this star could mean. To travel to find this newborn king of the Jews. We loaded up camels with provisions and gifts. We needed gifts if we were to meet a king. Each of us pulled together the finest we had to offer um, so that when we did meet this king, when we did find him, we would have gifts that were worthy of him. And we set off that very night. For more than a year and over a thousand miles, we travelled in the direction of which the star had appeared. But we never thought of abandoning our quest. Even though it was difficult and long, it felt too important. We passed through many intriguing and wonderful places, through the heart of the Roman imperial power with its fortresses and splendour like we'd never seen before, through the, um, th through the heart of Greek culture, art and architecture that we could have spent a lifetime studying. But need drove us on. The need to find the answer to the star's message. The need to find the king foretold in the prophecies. Eventually, we came to the district of Judea and in Jerusalem, we saw the mighty palace of Herod with walls 45 feet tall and ornamental towers stretching above the wall. The palace was both forbidding and awe-inspiring. If anyone knew where to find this king, Herod would. Herod called us before him in audience. He asked us who this baby was that we were searching for. The king of the Jews, we answered. We followed his star here to Bethlehem and we searched for him to pay him homage, to worship him. Herod put his scholars to work to find out where this Messiah that had been prophesied was to be born. Bethlehem was the answer. A short journey from Jerusalem. I remember him saying, one thing I ask of you, when you return, come and see me again and tell me where to find this child so that I can pay him my respects too. Herod didn't look to me like a king who would pay his respects to anyone other than himself. But we agreed to his request. As we left the palace, we saw it. The star had reappeared. Quickly, friends, I pleaded, while it's still shining. So onwards we went. We followed the star to Bethlehem, to a small home in one of the side streets. There the star stood directly above us and a hope rose within us that our search was over. And it was. For here we found the young child being cared for by a friendly craftsman named Joseph and a lady who we discovered was the mother of Jesus. One of my companions ran to his saddlebags. He bought out a purse of gold, a treasure fit for a king. My friend had always hoarded his money. He'd become very rich, but now I found him kneeling at the feet of the child, offering up a bag of what he held dear. His love for Jesus now outweighed his love of money. My other companion also came forward bearing a gift. 
frankincense it was. We'd always used it in worship to our gods, burning it in sacrifice to our idols. Now he bought it to give in worship of the one true God. No longer would he or any of us serve these false gods. We had seen the face of God. The gift I gave was the most confusing. It took me over 30 years to understand it. I had in my saddlebags many possibilities for gifts that I could give. One was a container of myrrh. I almost overlooked it, but I felt compelled that this was to be my gift. Why? I asked myself. Myrrh is a spice for embalming, a gift to the dead, not the living. But I gave it anyway, despite my uncertainty. I would come to learn that this child born in Bethlehem was born to die on a cross for all humanity. My gift was a sign of things to come. We left that night in awe of all that we had seen and heard. An angel came to me in a dream and warned me not to return to Herod. So we all departed and returned home by another route. I've never ventured back to Bethlehem, but my life was forever changed by the experience of meeting Jesus, God's Son. Have you met Jesus yet? Has your life been forever changed like mine? Or are you still on a journey like I was, seeking something or someone, not sure where you're going or what you're looking for? God is actively working in the world around you. There are signs of his presence everywhere. Why not call out to him today? Ask him to show you something of himself. Or ask someone who you know is a follower of Jesus, a Christian, if they can help. And if you, like me, enjoy studying and learning, then why not take a look at the books of Matthew, Mark and Luke in the Bible. They're a good place to start. May your quest to discover Jesus, God's Son, be a wonderful journey of adventure. And when you have encountered him, may you be excited to spend the rest of your life journeying with him, learning more of him, worshipping and serving him as you live your life thankful for all that he has done for you and for all creation. For through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, we are able to know God and experience his transforming love in our lives. I wish you well for the journey. Amen. From the squalor of a borrowed stable By the spirit and a virgin's faith To the anguish and the shame of scandal Came the saviour of the human race But the skies were filled with the praise of heaven Shepherds, listen as the angels tell Of the gift of God come down to man At the dawning of Emmanuel King of heaven, now the friend of sinners 
servant in the Father's hands, filled with power and the Holy Spirit, filled with mercy for the broken man. Yes, he walked my road and he felt my pain, joys and sorrows that I know so well. Yet his righteous steps give me hope again. I will follow my Emmanuel. Through the kisses of a friend's betrayal, he was lifted on a cruel cross. He was punished for a world's transgressions. He was suffering to save the lost. He fights for breath. He fights for me. Loosing sinners from the claims of hell. And with a shout, our souls are free. Death defeated by Emmanuel. Now he's standing in the place of honor, crowned with glory on the highest throne, interceding for his own beloved, till his father calls to bring them home. Then the skies will part as the trumpet sounds, hope of heaven or the fear of hell. But the bride will run to her lover's arms, giving glory to Emmanuel. Yes, the skies will part as the trumpet sounds, hope of heaven or the fear of hell. But the bride will run to her lover's arms, giving glory to Emmanuel. Let's pray. Journey in God, who beckons us to join you on the road. Be with each of us as we come to the end of this difficult year and begin to look forward to what might be ahead of us. Give courage to the cautious, strength to the weary, vision to the short-sighted and hope to those who are broken in spirit. When we are unsure of where you are leading and cannot chart our path or our progress, give us trust and a toleration of not knowing. When we are certain about the pattern of your mission, give us humility and the grace to listen and learn from each new situation. As the wise men brought gifts to Jesus, so may we bring gifts to one another in the world. May we share our material resources justly, practice fair trade, respect the earth and exercise mutual respect. May we promote freedom of thought and speech and worship. Find opportunities for all to grow in grace and exercise mutual encouragement. May we stand in solidarity with the oppressed and the suffering. Weep with those who weep. Lament the atrocities of history and exercise mutual love. Journeying God, help us to follow you however difficult the path seems to be. For in you lies our ultimate security, our greatest freedom. Amen. Let's close with the grace. 
May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen.